So what do I know about me? Well, I know way too much about just enough things. I went through my falling down rabbit hole stages and you got to stop falling down rabbit holes and people cannot stop falling down rabbit holes until these doctors in these movies get their shit together. I've never been able to have my birth chart done accurately and if I'm not going to get it done accurately, I don't want it done. I have not been able to find any piece of paper with my exact time of birth, but the closest thing that I have found was a, a hospital document that had my birth time written down as 11, 12 a.m. So that'd be putting me coming through the portal of a woman, you know, right around 11, 11 a.m. I don't know anything about religion. I don't know anything about spirituality and <laughs> Boom, here I am, knew way too much this whole time. Been sitting at this really weird 50-50 fence my whole life. And, well, if I'm going to help people get out of their heads and jump on the right bandwagons, I'm going to make a couple of offerings. I would like to offer new age brackets, first of all. I would like for people up until 24 to be called the new golden age. And then some new millennials and the new boomers. Boomers don't like being called boomers because they don't feel old. But I hate to be called a millennial because our, our age bracket has been trashed on purpose. And I'd like to set up some discussions between new millennials and new boomers. Because if new millennials and new boomers do not start talking about this shit, what are we going to tell these people are we going to keep lying? Are we going to keep being confused and angry and hateful? Or are we all going to get our shit together to save our kids? Hmm. This DSM-5 has gotten huge right on time, on purpose. There are some normal human beings who are unfortunately screwed up in their heads. There are also a lot of not normal human beings being ripped apart and stuck in the middle because of stuff like this. What is schizophrenia? Remember whenever me, myself, and Irene came out. That was what schizophrenia was supposed to look like. And then this movie came out. And identity was like, people were watching that, including myself going, what the hell is that? Oh, oh, that's schizophrenia now. Okay. Favorite actor Ryan Reynolds over here in 2014 with a movie called The Voices. I don't know if you've ever seen these movies. I've kind of seen a lot of movies once and, you know, a, a caliphant don't forget shit. So, everybody. 
everybody keeps looking at all of these movies thinking that these are all schizophrenia. And depending on what doctor you see, yeah, maybe they still believe these same ancient things. Me, myself, and Irene is not schizophrenia. That is disassociative identity disorder. Identity is not schizophrenia. That is also disassociative identity disorder. Boop, boop. Now the voices. This movie is every single thing that you can experience under the umbrella of OCD, bipolar, manic type, all the way through to the type with the psychotic features. Features. And yeah, schizophrenia. Now, all I had to do was walk into a hospital and ask for an MRI because I was not sleeping. The shit that I was experiencing, I was not sleeping. I asked for an MRI and a migraine cocktail, and I was promised that if I 202'd myself, that I would get what I needed medically, which was the MRI and the migraine cocktail. Because until last year, I never had anything but anxiety and depression and post-traumatic stress disorder labeled on me. Anxiety. What the hell is that? That is the only UFO that has ever scared me in this world. <laughs> Tell you right now, these UFOs and shit, what the hell are you going to do? Obviously, they've been around forever and everybody's been in denial until, you know, these declassifications came through. I mean, are you kidding me? That's denial. This shit's been going on forever. Yeah. Well, anxiety and depression are some serious UFOs that I think really, you know, stem from OCD. It is an anxiety disorder that causes depression, that causes people to deal with manic and depressed floors and ceiling smashes. And depending on what doctor you see, just like those idiots at the Johnny Depp trial, depending on what doctor you see, depending on how in denial they are of their issues, depending on what kind of a mood they're in, depending on what kind of a mood you're in, it is not okay that no doctors are coming back to square one and regrouping. After COVID and with the bombing of these mental facilities right now, if every single doctor isn't diagnosed with anxiety and depression and taking medication for it, if all of these frontline mental health people sitting in the offices answering the phone calls, talking to people like they are shit because they are overwhelmed and they're tired of it and they can't see that they have problems and they don't want to admit that maybe they need to become a patient because they don't want to be labeled. They don't want to be 
shuffle through the gerbil wheel that we all have to run, that is hypocrisy. That is not fair. Are you a normal person or not? Are you good or are you bad? Well, we're all really good and we're all really bad. And all you have to do when they say repent is stop and look at yourself and change your ways, change your mentality. I am so worried for the mental health patients right now, especially, especially people that aren't really diagnosed, but they're over there in left and right fields, you know, getting made fun of. Like the incel community. I know that the incel community are birds of a feather who are flocking together. And I know they're catching a real bad rat because they tend to be a little, you know, narcissistic and they tend to be very schizo things, very, very isolated, you know? But I know a very good incel who does not even know he is an incel if he came out of his house, he would never understand why he talks like, oh, these people, this, these stupid humans, that, these stupid everything. I really, really pray for the incel community. These people are stuck in a huge dark burst light kind of reality. And I do not think that all incels are bad. The way they're coming off on these murder mysteries right now, the way they're mishandling their aggressions with the world and they're taking it out on women. There's a lot of hope here in this community. If you listen to if you listen to rock and you love Avenged Sevenfold, yes. If you have ever heard of a band called Coheed and Cambria, <laughs> you're probably a star seed. Birds of a feather. Those are intergalactic angels, is what they are singing about. If you have never yet heard of a band called Bad Omens, that's a mirror. Those is good omens. Check them out if you like, if you like rock, because I went and saw A Day to Remember a couple months ago. And this was the opening band. And I'm telling you what, I have never, th th I swear, seeing this band and feeling the energy of this A Day to Remember concert in Pittsburgh, it was literally like at the very beginning of this wreck kind of ascension I was really going through. But the energy that I felt and the energy that the singer Sebastian felt, no Sebastian, Noah, yeah. The energy that even he felt in that crowd was amazing. I have been going to the same shows with the same people. I've been going to Vans, Warped Tour, X-Fest, OzFest, Slipknot, hell yes. There are so many good people in these communities you would never see what happened at a Travis Scott happen concert happen at a fucking slipknot show 
just over in a day to remember. I've seen it so many times. People crowd surfing people with wheelchairs. Never, never drop these people. We will never drop each other. Bad omens is fantastic. I have never seen so many people hear two or three songs of theirs and go running for merchandise. This band opened for a day to remember. And by, you know, their concert coming up here in Pittsburgh, their tickets are already more expensive than the A Day to Remember ticket. This band's only been around a couple years. They are blowing up. Yes, these are good entities. These are good people out here. And these movies, these music, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. these movies and shows are traps and you need to start finding your happy places in music. I know where happy places of music are all over the place. I mean, country, I like to go back to Diamond Rio. I like to go back to Ty Herndon and old good country. I like a lot of new country as well, but there's happy places in every genre. And if you really like rock and you really like heavy metal, that's a hell of a good genre.